at our annual uh, dinner uh, Chris Hadfield a year ago while he was recording with the Space Oddity. Is, is he Explorers Club as well? Is he what? Is he part of Explorers Club as well? I know. I'm not sure. I have to check. Probably. Here's Richard Garriott's file. That's where his daughter Kinga had asked her to the stars. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. So what are all these tiles? Tiles are $1,500 and they go to the upkeep of the building and if you want to dedicate a tile and donate that, then Ken. Gotcha. This is Ken Howery, Ken from the Board of Directors. He was Elon Musk's co-founder of PayPal. So he dedicate that's his dedication to himself? I guess. Yeah, well, they, okay. most people put themselves. I got you. Richard just put his daughter Kinga just because. So I could put anything right there, it's empty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I plan to put one. Surely. Sure. You gotta fight me for that tile then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You gotta fight you for that one. Or I, I might take. The like, top left one? Oh, I don't think you're allowed. Nah, I don't think you're allowed, but that's like the title right there. Maybe like over by the spot. Yeah. Looks kind of empty over here. Oh, these are the guys you have to fight for. I think they're next. Oh, that's true. I think they might end up expanding this a little oh, more. Like, all right. Not. Right. They have all of this real estate to work with. I would put it right underneath yeah. a table, so then you're forced to look at it yeah. when you're eating. You know, because. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this is the dining room. This is called officially called the library, and this is where many of the events are held. Like we do a lot of private events. What are they setting up for? Huh? What are they setting up for? Uh, I think they're just setting up for a private event or uh, a lecture. In the Clark room, we usually have our lectures. And this is sort of when people do like rehearsal dinners or like wedding parties, they take all these chairs out and it's like long, nice, whatever you want, basically. Hey, okay, Alex. How are you? Hi. Um, this was the first sled that ever went to the North Pole. Um, it was Matthew Henson and Robert Geary's sled. And then these flags are the flags that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. um, so there's 202 flags in the club, and the president bestows a flag on 50 different expeditions each year. Uh, and they have to be expeditions that are going to accomplish something you know, new and exciting or something right. that hasn't been done or that's being done better. Right. Um, and this is just the iteration of what the flag looked like. So Roy Chapman Andrews designed this one and he brought it to the Gobi Desert. He's whom Lawrence of Arabia is based on. Really? Uh, Roy Chapman Andrews. And then it evolved into this more, so that was like first rough sketch in 1925. And then it evolved into like the compass rose evolved into just the right. rosette kind of thing. Not much has changed afterwards. Yeah, and then they kind of kept it. Um, so they're all something like they've accomplished something extraordinary to be retired and most of them have gone on hundreds of expeditions so this is a polar dog sled this is uh, the first transarctic flight um, this is to true North Pole um, and this is all of the Apollo expeditions so and this is just a cool letter that Jim Lovell wrote to the Explorers Club explaining how since all the problems with Apollo 13 happened the flag could not be unfurled and had to be in a fireproof bag and mm -hmm. was not allowed to be taken out on the craft. But still really cool stuff. And um, that flag over there was the one that Sir Edmund Hillary took to the top of Mount Everest for the first time. And then last year, James Cameron, the film director, took it to the bottom, deepest point of the ocean in the Marianas Trench. So that flag's sort of been to the top and the bottom of the world. Oh, wow. So it's been retired. Wow. You know, having accomplished that. So they reuse the flags? Yeah, something? usually when you apply to carry a flag on an expedition, you can't use retired flags. Right. The club will try to match you with a flag that has either a similar history or right. that complements yours. Something. And how many flags did you say there were? 202. One for two for each year, you said? Uh, and then 50 per year. So most of them aren't retired. Like, it's very rare that a flag gets retired. Right. Um, unless they've done something extraordinary or been thing, part of, like, groundbreaking. I think one's gonna end up in Mars, huh? Yeah, well, that's the hope, but it probably won't <laughs> come back for a very long time. Shoot a missile there. Yeah. 
I do not know. Okay, oh no, you're good. No, sorry. Um, I can find someone for you from New York Cater. Um, paintings were all really cool all the way up because before they had color photography, they used to bring classically trained painters with them on expeditions instead to capture the colors. So the attention to detail is pretty incredible. Like that painting alone, there's 46 different animals in it, even though it looks Literally. like a it barren looks, animal Yeah, it does look barren. Where are the animals? If you look like really closely. Oh, I see it. You can see like zebras. That, and then gazelle here, here, and here. And then there's more on the side, and then there's birds. And oh. there's a herd back here of buffalo. And wow. So it's like that really, is detailed. Yeah, I did not notice that. It's awesome detail. And all of them have this level of intricacy, which is really cool. It's awesome because otherwise there would be no way to see the vibrant colors of like a rainforest. Right. So these painters are forced to come with these guys, yeah. even though they're not explorers. Yeah, Hi. This is Paul Rosen, he's the executive director. Hi. So it's a piece of Amelia Earhart's plane, obviously not the one that she went missing in, but right. <laughs> a former one. And then he has the Wright brothers. He has. Um, but that that one they already come. That, that one they yeah. So the said two pieces are pieces of the historic plane. There's the Wright brothers' plane right behind the door. The Dahlia Wright, the first plane to fly across the English Channel, the De Havilland Beach for the first plane ever used during the war. Wow. The Curtis NC4, first plane to fly across the Atlantic, not nonstop, that's Lindbergh, who's in the corner. The Fokker D7, that's the first plane to do an aerobatic intentionally. Uh, the Fokker T2, first plane to fly across the continent of the United States. And the Red Baron's plane, Amelia Earhart's plane, uh, as uh, Tony said, not the one she went missing in, but in 1932, a transatlantic flight. And the Douglas World Cruiser, the first plane to fly around the world. In fact, Mildred Polk's uncle was the pilot. She's a fellow of the club and uh, the founder of a women's exploration um, group called Wings World Quest in her empire. And that's the onboard flight manual for the first Soyuz space mission. And these are cosmonaut gloves. Um, so are these all members of the club? or? Uh, well, no, you know, uh, a lot of the pilots were, right. but not of Amelia Earhart because women weren't allowed to oh. be members up until the 80s yeah. gotcha. of the club. So she would have been. She would have been, definitely. She would have been qualified for sure. Those were the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the, at the, I think one of the earliest maps of Everest where they recognized that it was the tallest building. Oh, uh, up there. Uh, this is a, um, a campaign, uh, chair. campaign chair during the Shaka Zulu expedition of 1879. Uh, 1,800 British soldiers fought 20,000 Zulu, and only 300 soldiers survived. And this is the chair comes completely apart, and they carry it. It wraps up its own canvas. There's not a nail in it. It just rolls up, and they can carry it wherever they want. So they gotcha. have something comfortable to sit on. And then uh, that's Spaceship One, which was the first to break the first commercial um, suborbital spacecraft that broke the sound barrier. And it's signed by Bert Rutan and Brian Binney, the pilot. And, and Bert designed it. Bert designed it. It's the head of uh, Scaled Composites, which so I remember Virgin watching. Galactic's company now is called Virgin Galactic, obviously, but their spacecraft is called Spaceship Two because they right. worked directly with Scaled right. to create this. I forget whose signature that is. Someone else. Oh, Mike something. Mike something. But. Brian Binney and Bert Ruchan, important. And then this is Sierra Nevada. Um, there, it's their Dream Chaser, which is another suborbital spacecraft. And the CEO of Sierra Nevada is building the engine for Virgin Galactic. Um, yeah. No, so Sierra Nevada is building that engine. Ray Chapman Andrews, who they modeled Indiana Jones after. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he, his, what does he do? See his flag down there. That was that flag that I showed you. That was like. Yeah, he did Gobi Desert. Yeah, right. Where they found the first dinosaur egg and were able to prove that dinosaurs were in fact um, um, reptiles. I didn't know Indiana Jones was based on a real person. Oh yeah, yeah. that's him. Yeah. In fact, his whip is upstairs, and they really. Yeah. So the whip is a real thing. Yes. Oh. Uh -huh. 
the, the cosmonaut gloves were just really cool. It was a sort of doomed Soyuz mission where it, the capsule landed in the ocean instead mm-hmm. of on land as it was supposed to. And the uh, Russians didn't even think to really look that night to try to rescue the capsule. They assumed that all three men had perished. Right. But when they pulled it out the next morning, they were all half alive and half near frozen to death. And they all ended up surviving, but this was... Uh, pair of, one of their cosmonaut gloves. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, so thanks, Will. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Oh, and this is when Will and I both went to go see Stephen Hawking, and uh, that's his thumbprint. Oh. <laughs> Since normally right. all of the astronauts sign things, but uh, right. Stephen got inked. You could have just done anyone do that. <laughs> How tall is this building? Six stories. Six. We can't really go in there today, but that's the president's office. We'll be down that corridor. Okay. But that's also um, Teddy Roosevelt's bedroom when President Roosevelt was in town. We slept in there, so we call it the Roosevelt room. So is there an actual bed in there now? No, now it's just an office. Oh, but okay. way back when, when this house was used in a house capacity. Right. So that's Carl Akeley the father of taxidermy, the guy who made the elephant sculpture downstairs that I told you about. And he has these scars on the side of his head because he was, again, attacked by an animal, this time a cheetah, and he was unarmed this time. And he actually punched it down its throat and choked it from the inside out while it was clawing his face off. So that was one of his first pieces of taxidermy. The scars are barely noticeable. Yeah. You got the last laugh you got that. That's some story. Yeah, we always joke that like Dosakis could have looked harder. Probably the most interesting man. I mean, we've got cannibals <laughs> and like leopard punchers and. All right. This is called Springtime at Little America. The daughter of the editor of the New York Times in 1925 wanted to show the desolation of this Arctic camp, but they didn't have the capability for aerial photography, so mm-hmm. they had a painter paint this depiction, and then they took a photo of it and ran that photo on the cover of the New York Times as though it were a beat. All right. This is everyone we honored at our annual dinner this year that I ran. Um, so this was Jeff Bezos and his Apollo team. There's Elon. Walter Monk is the greatest living oceanographer today. He planned D-Day for the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, Rosemary Pacquio, our photographers. Franklin Chang Diaz is a NASA astronaut who is building basically an ion drive that could get us to Mars in as little as 39 days. Is that the ion drive? Yeah, yeah. And Maria Zuber is um, a planetary scientist who discovered basically the core of the moon and many planets, as well as our crust to the Earth. That's the president. Does Elon Musk always look like that? (laughs) How are you? This is my friend Alan. Hi, Alan. Alan's his last time. And then these are famous members and explorers that are part of it. But this is really the front room. This is the trophy room. Where you had the wedding. Yes, this is my, my wedding this week. So this is one of the largest narwhal tusks. Um, like, I've never seen a narwhal in person before. Yeah, I've never seen a narwhal in person. Um, they're like the unicorn of the sea. Right, literally. <laughs> yeah, he's right on the walrus. Oh. I don't think there's anything really special about him, but I've never seen a no, but I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, right. you know, unique. He looks adorable. Yeah. That's Little one eyes. of the largest elephant tusks by girth, not by length, but um, isn't it? Well, this is the first really old. Tri- uh, flight transmitter of Richard Byrd, and he was going over the South Pole in 1929. It's pretty amazing that that's what kept a plane up and flying. Um, now it's just a march trip. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> These were the pressings of the guy that I told you about, um, Adolphus Greeley, who ended up having to cannibalize a lot of his men over those five years. And he pressed flowers, and he was a general in the army at the time. So he's like quite introspective. Hey, how are you? Good. There's someone there. Good to see oh, you. Oh, hey. Nice to see you too. And um, this yeah, is. Yeah, it's been a fun couple of months. I'm doing ECAT again next year, so. You are? Yeah. 
So. Look out if you need it. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to need it. Um, this is a Yeti scout, purported Yeti scout. So Sir Edmund Hillary, when he came back from Mount Everest, he had heard so much about the Yeti right. that he went back to Nepal to find out if this like purported creature right. existed. And a couple of like particularly entrepreneurial Sherpas uh -huh. in the Himalayas sold him this Yeti scout. Oh. And so he brought it back home, and it was tested by Yale students, and it's Himalayan mountain goat. Yeah. Obviously. But All right. <laughs> so funny. These two cats on the bookcases were shot by Teddy Roosevelt. Um, so has anyone found the Yeti yet? No. No? no it's still just a myth? Still out. Gotcha. This is like a really rare double rhino tusk. It's just a genetic oh. anomaly. All right. Um, Looks just, like a blade. Yeah. It's cool. These That's are cool. incredible. These are all first edition uh, Napoleon Bonaparte from his tour to Egypt. So with his cartographer, these are just all first edition of Napoleon wow. books. Wow. Which is awesome. Um, same in this case. And that's the Woolly Mammoth Tusk. So in the 1950s, a, uh, an Explorers Club expedition found a uh, fully preserved mammoth in the tundra. Really? And that year, we ate woolly mammoth at the annual dinner. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So they always eat exotics at the annual dinner. So this year, we had like... You had a woolly mammoth for dinner? Yeah, they ate like woolly mammoth. What does that taste like? I don't know. It was in the, in the 50s, so I didn't, I wasn't around. <laughs> but apparently. Probably tastes like chicken. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is a taxidermy sperm whale penis. Mm. It's like the largest foreskin ever taxidermy. Mm. <laughs> so cleverly placed on a whale butt. Whose uh, idea was that? <laughs> yeah. Know, someone with a sense of this. A taxidermist with a sense of humor. Right. And this table was really cool. It was the presidential board table from the Summer White House at Sagamore Hill. And uh, this was a table where the Panama Canal was planned and all of the mm. original chairs from that. I, I would feel bad sitting on these things. I mean, these are like historical chairs. Yeah, they're part of history. And people would just sit on them, huh? Well, it's really cool because a lot of our uh, board of directors, I mean, you can see they're all coming yeah, apart. Yeah, like I would a feel bad the breaking them. Board of directors members are, you know, in their own right, right. quite esteemed. Right. And so it's kind of right. fitting gotcha. in the theme of, um, you know, history repeating itself and important people conducting important right. business. It's almost like paying homage to the history of the table. Understood. This uh, is a super rare quadruple elephant tusk, and it's, um, yeah. It was in the movie Out of Africa in the background. This is uh, Indiana Jones' whip. Right, the real whip. Yeah, it was real whip. So Roy Chapman Andrews is the guy, and that was his whip uh, that he carried with him. What does he use it for? Anything and everything. I mean, he was the, you know, all of the sort of stories that go along with. Um, I'm assuming not whipping bad guys, Lawrence right? Lawrence of Arabia. No, but like, you know, in right. case of animals, in case of right. thieves, and, you know, kind of bad guys, like okay. robbers and theft and okay. things on the trail. Were, Anyways. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. So this was, like, his important thing he had with him, and that carried over when... Uh, all, like, dried up? Oh, it is all dried up. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Um, this is Peter Forkin. He's a uh, another president, past president of the Explorers Club. He was caught in... Um, post avalanche, totally ill prepared for it. Um, I guess you never can be prepared for avalanche, but he was for three days stranded in the Arctic, and all he had on him was a hammer, and he was actually so disoriented and sick and of hypothermia and um, frostbite that he ended up hammering off his own foot and eating it to survive. So you see, it's a peg leg in the painting. Again, like there's more of these badass characters that just like these have. Overlooked. That's pretty much. I mean, there's a lot of random stuff. Like you have to find a giraffe tail okay. with no context. <laughs> like, there's a tag. Yeah, but it's it's, it's nope, there's nothing, nothing on it. Nothing. Yeah. Write your own thing. There's zero Kelly context. This. It just says giraffe, giraffe tail number five hundred six. You should write Kelly caught this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> caught by Kelly. And like a hundred years from now, expedition. someone be like some <laughs> yeah. Kelly person caught this. Exactly. <laughs> Had a fight a draft for these it. These all rotate in and out um, of exhibitions. So this is, I guess, focusing on like Nepal and Tibet, and you know, I think there's some Everest rocks and stuff like that. Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's a signature. Yeah. 
So how do you guys get this stuff? A lot of it's given to the club um, from, from members. From members from their estates when they pass away. Right. They want the Explorers Club to have all all of their collection so that other people can appreciate it. Right. And it's such a focal big part of so many members' lives that um, you know, they really care about paying it forward. Right. And beyond that, we have a lot of like reciprocal relationships with a lot of museums. I mean, some stuff in here used to be in the Museum of Natural History and vice versa. Stuff mm. in the Museum of Natural History, especially some of the paintings and stuff, used to be here. Carl Akeley, the taxidermist, he has an entire hall. The, all of the taxidermy in the Museum of Natural History is his. He has the Carl Akeley Hall of African Mammals at the museum. He was famous not for, he hated trophy hunting and taxidermy, like all of that. Yeah. This was his taxidermy. He always made sure that it was only for educational purposes and mm-hmm. place the animal whole yes. in its environment right. and stage it as though it were in action. Yeah, he would have like abhorred all of the, the pegs. And- right. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of hunting myself. Yeah, the club certainly isn't like endorsing them in any way. They're just passed on from collections. Understood. And these are just, you know, some of the- Where's like, your picture? Or- broke the sound barrier for the first time. You, you know. gotta get up there. Yeah. There's two spots for you. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> this is one of them. Two down from Jim Cameron. Not so bad. Right next to John Glenn and Scott Carpenter. It's not so bad. You'll get there. He's very first time Mars, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's been a couple of paintings that are members. Obviously, Pedro de Elk, but also... Um, oh, so the entire... It's not just Buzz. The entire... Neil Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all of them. What about 25 astronauts? Remember? That's a cool picture. Isn't it? It's pretty amazing. I would freak out if I was that separated from the world. (laughs) The entire world. From all of your species. Pretty cool. And there's Jack with him. So last year, which was really incredible, not this past one, but the year before, Mm -hmm. Uh, a group of from the Explorers Club called the you know, Ernest Shackleton. When he was in his Arctic expedition, he had lost a crate of his whiskey okay. in like 1904. Um, and an Explorers Club team found that crate of whiskey that was perfectly uh-huh. preserved wow. in the tundra and they brought it to the annual dinner. And so two years ago, we had another group that brought in, it was a glacier conservation league, mm-hmm. and they brought a piece of a glacier and they chipped oh, wow. off pieces of the glacier and For poured ice. 110 year old whiskey oh, man. and served it. And it's like the <laughs> best thing ever. And everyone died from uh, influenza afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> from the grip. <laughs> they're they're um, Bathroom? doing something in there, but there's like a very tiny annex called the map room. Because there's a bunch of cabinets and oh, of right. almost every iteration of every coastline of maps from like the 1400s on from every continent, so you can see how the borders change. And lately, people have been doing this cool thing where they want to take like historically accurate trips, mm-hmm. and so they'll use maps from the 1600s and chart mm-hmm. out the you know with their compass like how to you know navigate those waters as though they were for the first time discovering the new world or something. Try to see it through the lens of an explorer. And the pump has an elevator too. Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me that now. (laughs) Do you guys hold a lot of weddings here? Not so much weddings as much as rehearsal dinners. I've seen some absolutely stunning like transformations of that club into a long table rehearsal dinner. Right. I think it's hard to do a wedding here. I mean, I did mine here because it was so quick and dirty. It was right. like Will officiated it at one witness and just right. my husband, and that's it. But if you want like 200 people in here, it's hard to find a place where everyone can see. Yeah. How awesome is it to get married here? All the history. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, coffee's on. Well, have you built? No, no. Here, I'll take it. Yeah. 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 Ye
two, though. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You got a tour? 